how you doing everyone? My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek. And today, I got a story for you that has been about two years in the making. Okay, you're going to like this. I'm going to give you a practical tip first. Okay, we're going to talk about something called 1035 Exchange. This is regarding life insurance. Okay, so another life insurance tip. And then I'm going to tell you the story. Okay which has to do with the 1035 exchange, okay? So if you are here for the very first time, I wanna welcome you, God bless you. Thank you for stopping by. On this channel, we talk about Velocity Banking, Infinite Banking, Kingdom Authority, 10X, creating content, pursuing your purpose in life, and many others, okay? So that we can what? Build a successful kingdom that will last forever. Okay, so with that being said, let's talk about the 10 and the 35 exchange Uh I don't have the exact definition in front of me, but in a nutshell, the 1035 exchange allows an individual to take an existing life insurance policy and put it into a new one. Now, why would I do such a thing? Well, a lot of people get poorly designed life insurance policies created on themselves. Come to find out years later, years later down the road, forgive me, I have a, uh, a scratchy voice, <clears throat> but I figured it was, it was, it gave me some depth. So I was like, let me record because I think I have that daddy voice going on. So I was like, let me, let me, uh, <laughs> let me record some videos. So with that being said, let's say for example, you own a whole life policy You've had it for about two, three years. And then you come across my YouTube channel or someone else talking about the infinite banking concept and you get blown away. You're like, wow, this is the deal. This is the real deal. I need to do this. This is going to help me do X, Y, and Z. And you're like, but I have this existing policy. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's designed properly for the infinite banking. Can I even do infinite banking with my policy? But right, let's just say you can't. Let's just say it's a terrible policy. You've got more than 75% of your money going towards premium and like 25% or less going towards cash value. So that would be classified as a poorly designed policy. But let's say you got a couple thousand in there, 10, 15K in cash value, and you want to bomb, move that cash value over to a new, better design policy. You can do that through the 1035 exchange. We take cash value from there and we're able to fund a new policy. The old one will die and then we'll have a new one that'll perform better, that'll give us the, the best uh, dividend rates, performance, company will be better, just everything will be better. It'll be a, it'll be a 1090 split, 10% going towards premium, then 9% going towards cash, all right? So that is 1035 exchange. I encourage you to look it up, look up the proper definition. I'm just giving you a little spin on it. But now I wanna give you a little story, okay? So let's direct our attention to the board. I gotta give you the details first. So before Denzel Rodriguez became Denzel Rodriguez of a YouTube channel, Kingdom Citizen in Christ, saved, all right? Uh, in 2018, I had a job. I was a food and beverage manager. Okay. I was making 2000 a month. You know, I had a salary pay, 35K a year. Things were okay, right? I was managing them. I was doing velocity banking on the low, low. This is before I was making videos, right? So this is prior to August of 2018. Um, something incredible happened. I got fired at my job, so I lost all my income. But understand that right before I lost my job, I had planned a vacation, number one. My mom had just lost her job two to three months prior. So you can imagine, me, the son, loves his mom. I was helping her pay debts, so I was putting myself into debt, but I understood the velocity banking concept, so I just classified that as a chunk to help her and then I was gonna use my money, pay myself back, right, do the whole concept. Well, didn't turn out that way. Here's what ended up happening. My income went to zero. 
still had expenses, right? My expenses went up because I was helping mom. I got to pay myself, blah, blah, blah. Total debt, 2000 I'm negative cash flow. I had a personal unsecured line of credit for 5 k which was almost maxed out because of what I was doing. And I had some credit cards at the time, I think like four or five. One or two of them was on a 0% uh, offer. So 2018, uh, June, the, uh, the last week of June, lost my job, right? July, come back from the vacation. I received that last paycheck from my job, which I dumped in the line of credit along with any savings I had, whatever cash I had, dumped in the line of credit. I drastically lowered all my expenses. I got rid of all my subscriptions and everything. So I'm going like, I have to go on conservation mode, all right? And then I had to decide what I was gonna do with my life. Was I gonna go get a job or was I gonna go pursue my purpose in life, right? I believe God was calling me to do something else, which is why he allowed me to lose that job and he allowed the opportunity for me to take action, right? So from July to August, started making videos on YouTube, right? Started posting, blah, 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 right? Trying to make money. Okay, here was a strategy that I did to help me uh, bring in some extra money so that I can, you know, do this whole thing with the YouTubo, right? So here was the strategy. Here's what I did. Ready? No income. 5K line of credits, almost maxed out, but I, but I had that one last paycheck, so I managed to bring it down. And then mom got her job, and then she was helping me with stuff. And then my girlfriend also helped me financially with some things as well. So knowing the velocity banking concept at the time, plus the infinite banking concept, what I decided to do was get a life insurance policy, right? For the infinite banking concept. The design was based off my cash flow when I had a job, which was 500 a month. So times that by 12, 6K is what I was funding into the policy. The MEC limit is 11K and the premium was 3,000. You're like, whoa, Denzel, that's not a properly designed policy. Hear me out. It was, this was not a 1090 split, this was a 50-50. The reason why I did that is so that I myself, as the agent, something that you can do if you are a licensed life insurance agent, and you're with a particular brokerage. So in, in my case, um, IBC Global was so kind enough. I don't know if they do this with every age. I don't know how it works. But at the time, my mentor, my coach designed this policy for me 50-50. Because I'm the agent, he put my name on the policy so that I would receive 100% of the commission, right? So with that being said, here I got 3,000 going towards premium, right? But when you start a policy as a life insurance agent, I decided to fund the policy monthly, right? So 500 bucks a month, which I took from here, the line of credit. So I took 500 bucks from the line of credit, funded the policy, and then the insurance company I got paid 2,500 plus in commissions, which I then threw right back in the line of credit, right? Another thing I did because I lost my source of income at the time is I also went to the credit union and I increased the line of credit to 10K. I got a $5,000 increase. So what did that allow me to do? This allowed me to buy time so that I can make videos, um, really talk about what it is I wanna talk about, velocity banking, infinite banking, kingdom authority, you know, getting saved, uh, uh, getting motivated, building your income, 
you know, 10x in your lifestyle, all this stuff I want to do. So here's what was going on in the background. And now that you guys are finally knowing like the full story, financial story behind the growth of Denzel, is there a little scheming going on here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a financial scheme going on here, a legal one, right? But it's a scheme all in all. I'm taking advantage of the bank and my credit, my good credit to get that increase, 5K, which is going to buy me time so I can pay my bills for the next two months. I established a life insurance policy on myself so that when I'm talking to people, they believe what I'm saying. That, oh, do you have an infinite banking policy, Denzel? Duh. Yeah, I do. Here's what it is. Okay. All right. Uh, but even then, like, I knew this concept was going to work. I was willing to take the shot in the foot now so that I can like position myself later and I'll make up for my mistake. Because let me tell you, this is not how you want to design your policy. Let me, let me just be very clear. We want to do 1090 splits, okay? Or every time, all right? Majority of the time. You don't want to do this. This is not how you do infinite banking. This was simply a strategy. This was a longevity strategy approach that I was taking, okay? So with that being said, I was doing all of this, right? And then I, you know, I'm making the videos, right? I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm pushing out content. People are helping me. People are uh, paying me to, to do consulting and help them pay off debt really fast, get their credit up, get their cash flow up, start policies, everything. Income rises, right? I 10 x my income. And now coming back, I was like, okay, let's address this policy that for the long haul is not exactly the best, right, for infinite banking. So let me go back and design a 1090 split and we're going to do a 1035 exchange where I'm going to simply move all the cash value that is in there and I'm going to put it in a new policy and let's see what we get from there, right? So now let's forward to 2020, fast forward to 2020, here's what's going to happen now using the 1035 exchange. Before I sh share that part, let me just say that in the process of 10 xing my income, I also created a second policy using Guardian, which is one of the four major mutuals, putting in 70K a year, premium 7K, notice the split is a 1090. So using the 1035 exchange, we do the same thing with mass mutual is so I'm going to move my existing mass mutual policy where I was putting in 6k a year premiums 3k and I want to move it into a new policy where I'm funding 15k a year premiums 1500 bucks do a 1090 split call it a day right so <clears throat> in order for me to have gotten to that point I needed to you know 10x I needed a you know build my income. I needed to do exactly what I told my friends and family and early clients what I was going to do, which is I'm going to build this YouTube channel. I'm going to share the word of God. I'm going to share my experiences. We're going to give pure, truthful, financial knowledge on money and how money works by any means necessary. However, I got to do whatever I got to do to get there. Right. And look where we are now. Right. So what looked like it was the end. The Lord saved me. The Lord positioned me. The Lord gave me the wisdom and the knowledge. And here is an example of when you should use the 1035 exchange. Something as simple as this. Or maybe you're not even in that serious of a situation. Let's say you're doing well financially. You got a big policy with a lot of cash value, but again, it's not designed right. It's not a 1090 split. And so <clears throat> we want to, you know, make a nice uh, uh, design policy. We can make the switch. We can take the existing cash value, put it into a new one and have that money work better, perform better through dividends, 
the guarantee values, right? And then be able to use it to do what? Velocity banking, pay off debt, increase cash flow, build credit, build capital, invest in real estate, 10x your income, create content, build a business. I mean, you know, this is what we gotta do. So now when we look at today's numbers, after, so this is in the, in the works. We're just gonna put that for right now. In the works. So I will create a follow-up video on the 1035 exchange, the exact paperwork I gotta do and what to fill out, how long it takes and how does the, how does the medical exam work and the underwriting, you know, do I have to do a whole nother examination again? Uh, do I keep my death benefit and how does the cash, do I lose the cash value? I gotta surrender it. Old policy died. I mean, all these questions I know are gonna come up, right? But now that I'm in a much better financial position to do such a thing, it makes sense, right? And I've been funding this policy for, for two years and I'll be entering the third year. So before I enter the third year, where I have to put in another 6K, right? I'm gonna use my, you know, income, new income now, expenses, debt, cash flow, right? So, you know, expenses zero now, uh, cash flow, we're, you know, we're in the neighborhood, seven to 10 K income. So you see how it, it drastically, you know, went up, right? So line of credit from the previous 10 K. Now I got 10 credit cards, you know, somewhere on 0%, two policies, right? Now we just have to fix up that old one so that when I start meeting newer clients now, I can be like, yeah, you know, I got two policies, 1090 split, yo, right? Praising the Lord, doing good works, sharing the message, right? Doing things how they're supposed to be done, doing business ethically, making it happen, okay? If you guys have any questions about the 1035 exchange, exchange, comment below, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the on the strategy, a little story that I have behind it. Did you like it? Do you think it was like, yo, that's against the rules? Um, no, it's not. Uh, it's legal. It's a financial scheme. Something that came up in my mind. I'm sure, and I would love to hear your stories, that when you're in the weeds, back's against the wall, right? You're on your last leg, right? Balls to the wall. What do you do, right? When you're in tough financial times. So there was an example. Hope you enjoyed. My name is Denzel Rodriguez. Have a wonderful day. God bless.